So, here we are. Another day, another adventure. Let's see how today goes, eh? Here we are fishing the mighty Loch Earn system again. It's a Sunday, so I am accompanied again with Mr. Howard. Everything is good. He has two rods on the bottom at the end of the jetty. I have two rods here beside me that are out and they're uh, hard on the bottom. I have a little uh, uh, salmon power and a dyed red half mackerel. It's been an interesting morning so far. We've got two crazy guys that's uh, launched a boat that's an inflatable dinghy and went out onto the, this part of the lock. This part of the lock, if the wind kicks up, is uh, merciless. So it's, a, it's something I wouldn't have done, put it that way. I wouldn't be going out in a boat unless I had a life jacket and I wouldn't be going out in an inflatable boat ever. You know. But, hey ho, I guess fortune favours the brave and pities the stupid. You've seen me fish here before. This is the venue where I had, the, had a rather large trout, as well as some pike that had the jaw broke from uh, people using a boga grip, which is not nice. Um, against one of my pet hits. We seem to have a lot of guys that come across from like France and Germany that stay in a local uh, a local fishing lodge that way and they seem to all use boga grips. Now a boga grip is basically uh, a metal vice that clips like that but they clip the bottom jaw of the pike to hold it up because for some reason they don't put their hand under the chin like we all do to hold the fish that way so they use these boga grips and it's it's not good because the pike eventually twists and snaps its lower jaw, the pike then can't feed, the pike then dies. And we don't like dead pike. So if you ever see a guy with a pair of boga grips in his boat, step onto the boat, pick up the boga grips and throw them off. And anyone that has boga grips and uses them and watches the channel and says, well, you wouldn't fucking do that to me. Yes, I would. In fact, I would pick you up by your bottom jaw with the boga grips on and see how you like it. Learn to hold the fish, it's not difficult. Anyway, we're not having a rant. It's a Sunday. It's a nice day. Sun is rising. The kettle has just literally brewed. The kettle has just literally boiled. So, let's get a cup of coffee and let's see what today brings. Just then. That's you, anybody? Not a blank. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello.
Máme pět dobu. It's about 15. Yeah, if it's like pushing it. 15, it's lucky. It's big head, it's not the body. It's not really fed up yet. I would say it could be a lot bigger than 15 in the way it's yeah. meant to be. Oh, cracking, man. It's not a blank. Fifteen pounds! And lice as well, leeches as well. So, there we have it. Dragonfish, buddy? 15 pounds. Let's get her released. Uh -huh. be pushing 20 come the middle of the winter. It's got the body for it, it's got the head for it. Yeah, oh it's a big head not there, it's good fish. Either that he's at his destination or his engine's died. Well, I hope the engine's died for our sake. <laughs> right. What I have here is a brand new shiny fishing rod. Again the wife does not know about this so please don't go and tell the wife. I know that somebody out there might be tempted to, but these don't need stabbed in my bed. This is the Dave Lum rods. I have now a four of these. These are uh, called Bit Blaster 350s. 350 means it's three pounds and a half test curve. 12 foot long, beautiful rod. Personally, I like the cork handles, but because Dave will build you a rod and whatever way you want, whatever colours you want. If you don't like cork and you want the abbreviated handles or the shrink wrapped handles, he will do that for you too. Personally, I like cork. There's something nice in a cold day holding a cork rod handle. I balanced it with a, a Shimano, this is the CI4 versions of the big bait runners. And the reason why I went with white braid is this reel was to be my uh, drifter float reel. So the white braid will be something I can see it like going out in the water and if I have to correct, I can correct. 
but at the minute it's just rigged up for uh, ledgering. I did have somebody saying to me that because all the other rails are like greeny browny braid and the white stuck out like a sore thumb and there was one of the guys that's on the Facebook goes it's giving me anxiety issues having it as a white braid there is a reason for the white braid the white braid is because this rod I particularly wanted it for the drifter float so you want to be able to see where the braid's going so you can kind of correct it so this is why it's white uh, standard ledger and rig I have the uh, two footer rig tubing to a rig swivel and to a clip Again, I've talked about the ledger and rig before. I've talked about why I use the uh, the rig tubing. You know, we all understand that there's lots of zebra mussels here, so we just have to beat the zebra mussels. This is my standard setup for ledgering. You can pop up a bit, you can fish it hard in the bottom. At the minute, most baits are on the bottom, hard on the bottom. I've not popped any of them up. I've not even injected any of them with oil yet. Uh, this braid, is 0 0.40 millimeters. It's made by Spider Spider Wire Spider Line. I'm using two different types of braid this year. I'm using Power Pro, and I'm using this Spider Line stuff. This is this breaks at a hundred pound. Now, before I hear people out there going, that's far too heavy for pike fishing. It isn't really. The mono filament that I use is 0.4 millimeter, and that's 20 pound mono. This braid is the same thickness as the mono that I would use and I would recommend that people use. I'm not telling people to go out there and buy 100 pound braid just to fish for pike. On these rail, these rails that came with the spare spool, the spare spools have uh, Power Pro 55 pound braid on them as well. So I can change to a, a lighter braid. This is just on it because it's on it. You know, it, it is what it is. The spare spools are in the van if I wanted to change them. But it is what it is, this is what's on the rod. Monofilament, I wouldn't go below 0.4 millimeter. Uh, for a long time I used a company called P-Line. They did a, a product called CXX, which was 21 pounds. And that broke at the knot, 21 pounds. So I don't know what, that's, what the line would have broke at. The guys that fish for catfish in England, they were using that product and they were pretty happy with it. Then there was a bit of an issue with me getting it. Uh, couldn't get it delivered, so we switched to a uh, Nash bullet again in 0.4 millimeter, and it was breaking at 20 pound. And then last the last couple of years, I was using uh, Suffix, I think it was Advance, and it was breaking at 35 pound for 0.4 millimeter. So as time goes on, the same thickness of line is the same thickness, but the lines get better. Companies make better products. There's doing better things to them. With a monofilament, you want something that's abrasion resistant and you want something that doesn't have memory. There's no point having a, a monofilament that's got memory because it'll just come out like a coil and it doesn't, it adds too much into the water. You think about it, if you have a straight line to your lead, then you are directly in contact with your bit. If you have line that's like that there, then when you go to pick it up and lift into it, you have a lot of stretch to take out of it. You have a lot of line that's in the water sitting doing nothing. So you've got to take that out of it before you make contact with the fish. That just means that potentially that fish has swallowed the bait. That fish that I caught today, that 15 pound fish, the two hooks literally were in its mouth, in the side of its mouth. You know, that's how you want to be catching them. You don't want to catch them with the hooks in the throat. You know, okay, sometimes that happens. It's happened to me. And if it happens to you, you just have to take your time. Don't get flustered, don't get emotional about it. The pike, you will unhook it. You just have to take your time. You go in through the gills, you pull, gently pull the trace up and you'll, trace, you'll eventually start to see the trace coming up. And just turn the hooks. Now, if you're new to fishing and you're a bit unsure, then I would recommend going fishing with somebody that fishes for pike. You know, that's not an invitation to the world to come fishing with me. That's just me saying, uh, there's clubs out there like the Pike Angling Club of Great Britain. In Scotland, there's like the Pike Angling Alliance of Scotland. In the Republic of Ireland, there's the Irish Pike Society. There's loads of clubs out there with guys that are uh, obsessed with pike. And they will quite happily go through rigs. They'll quite happily talk to you. And they will have days where they will invite you out and fish with them so you can understand and do things with them. You know, 
this the purpose of this vlog isn't isn't really to you know do a step by step education it's just me out talking shit and having fun fishing you know okay if you guys get something from it and it's improved your angling or it's helped you out in any way rock and roll but these this, these things here is just for a bit of fun you know it's like I had a, a there's a couple of youngsters that watch the channel and again I'm kind of conscious that I know there's youngsters watching the channel so I think you know maybe I shouldn't swear as much because I don't want to swear for our youngsters it's not not what I want you know but somebody was saying to me you know when you upload a video to YouTube you have to tick a box to say it is not for under 18s which typically that should mean that your videos can't if you if you've got a YouTube account and you are under 18 then you shouldn't even be able to find my videos but of course all that falls down if you don't have an account on YouTube and you just look, Google or look for the name you know but again I don't make videos for youngsters although I'm happy that youngsters watch them I kind of don't really want to do you know there's times when I have a rant and it just everything just comes out and sweary words happen you know there's people that have mentioned that I swear a lot uh, to those people, you know, I, I apologize if it offends you, but I can't change the way I speak. That's just the way it is. So, I am sorry, but I'm an adult. You're an adult. Language is language and offense is taken, not given. So, let's get past that. Anyway, this is the latest investment in fishing tackle. As you can see, it is perfectly balanced with this reel. So, I'm thinking about putting a bait on it and giving it a cast out. Or just having a bait on a trace ready to cast out. So if I do get another pike, I can cast the rod out straight away. And have, you know, bait in the water at all times. That last fish... Oh, I'll have to go through something as well. That last fish, you see me weigh the fish. Uh, the waist thing I have, when it is wet, it weighs over four pounds. So my scales are set to take away that weight. So when you have a scale that's set as zero, in fact, I'll just show you the scales. Right, my scales, you can see that there's they're set back from the zero. Right, that's to take into account the weight of the wet sling. If the needle was at the zero and I weighed the fish with the wet sling. It would have went from a 15 pound fish to a 19 pound fish and if I was dishonest I could say to you I've just had a 19 pound fish but what the fuck does that accomplish so this is why the scales are back set because I know I'm going to get questions about it I always do it all the time so the scales are back set so it takes into account the weight of the wet sling anyway I've talked shit for long enough I'm going to get to another cup of coffee so I'll see you in a minute it's that time again. It is cooking with scopes time again. Oh. Oh, yeah. Today we are going to have an old classic a sausage and bacon sandwich. Yeah, Can't go wrong with sausage and bacon sandwiches. Get the pan on the go. It's a bit windy here, so we're uh, going to be hoping that the pan behaves itself. Behave pan. Mallet and sausages. And Kennedy back bacon. Do the bacon first. Oh. No Guinness burgers today. They're out of stock. I blame myself for publicizing it. <laughs> That's the uh, it doesn't matter if it closes over. So I'm thinking, Jesus, we're going to lose. 
do something here. <laughs> the wind's gonna get us. I'm not sure if I fit all this in the same pan. Might do. It's all in the same pan. Rock and roll. <laughs> Obligatory test, the tongs are operational. Now let's get the bacon on the go. Nice crispy bacon. Some sausages and brown sauce. Has to be brown sauce. Always oh, brown sauce. Ah, red. Just Has to be brown sauce. How is time for the sausages? I get a lot of abuse that I burnt sausages on one occasion. Don't be haters. Charcoal is good for your teeth. Let's face it, we've all been shit-faced and silly. We've all had some random weird shit out of a takeaway. So we've all had worse. With sausage and bacon and nice fresh bread and some reds or from brown sauce, this is a winner. I discovered why my stove isn't cooking at full power. Because the wind's coming off the lock, hitting the bottom of the pit in the pan and getting bl blown under the pan. So it's a bit strange, I've never had this happen before. I need to get a bigger windbreak. Or possibly no, let's not hold it, that's warm. <laughs> let's let's not do that. That's a silly plan. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Didn't burn the sausages, but I've took off there's a skin of my thumb. <laughs> It's all good. Ish. <laughs> I can't give you a thumbs up with that thumb because it's kind of throbbing. <laughs> Fuck. I think you've knocked your other line. Have you? No. Whatever. Much past the ball. That was the right run there. Like. Mm hmm. Whatever happened. Don't know. Nothing. Odd. It's coming to the end of the day. As you can see behind me, it is flat calm. The wind is all but died, it's completely gone. And everyone that's in the boats, they're racing back to the jetty to, to get off the water before it's dark. Our, our friends from Eastern, Eastern Europe have left. I was okay, I only had to shout at them once to put the fish back in. Our other crazy friends in the blow-up boat, they, they came back surviving okay. Again, something's not right with your brain. If you're going to go out in a blow-up boat 
on Loch Earn and not wear a life jacket. This is a service announcement. Wear a life jacket, troops, because let's be honest, you will only ever drown the once. A life jacket, that might stop that from happening. Kind of hard to drink beer and shag women, you know, eat good food when there is a uh, there's no life in the forever box under the on the on the other side of the ground. So I've had a few casts of my uh, new rod. I've not put any bait on it. I've just put a lead on it and whacked it to the distance as far as I could. I do that when it's new because. I think with new braid you kind of, if it was monofilament you would stretch it, you know you would walk out, you know maybe 50-60 meters, tie a line to like a fence post or something and just kind of not, not try and rip it to bits, just kind of put it under, under a little bit of tension and then wind it on to realize you're walking back. That means that you're winding it on under tension and it's getting the best line lay. With braid, you can't really stretch braid because it's braid, there's no stretch in it. But if you put on like a four ounce lead or a five ounce lead and just whack it to the stars, whack it as far as you can to the horizon and then wind it back on, you'll find because you're winding in the, the lead width, you're putting the braid back on the rail right under tension it just means that you don't get uh, wind knots. Wind knots are horrible. Wind knots are caused because the braid's on the spool loose. And as you cast out, the braid goes out that quick. It bunches up, goes into a knot. And the wind knot is a pain in the arse to try and get rid of. Because it's always Sod's law. The wind knot will be, you know, the last 10 feet of line that's left your rod. Whereas the bait and the rod and the lead and everything's in the distance. so. You kind of have to sit dead quickly and untangle this mess because you just can't cut the braid, you know, because you're leaving bait in the water and we don't want to do that. But beautiful conditions. I don't know how long I'll be staying for. I'll probably only stay for another maybe an hour at the most. Like I said, once the uh, once that sun goes behind the hill in the background, you'll find this place will go dark very, very quickly. But all in all, it's not been a bad day. I've had one fish, it's been pretty good, it's been a double. We had some weird runs, we had a couple of weird runs where both drop, both our, both rods went at the same sort of time. And there was, when you were like lifting up to set the hooks, there was nothing there, no resistance at all. So part of me thinks it could have been, uh, maybe if there was a shoal of fish or something coming through. Or, uh, Maybe cormorants or something diving because we've seen a couple of them today. Hard to know what's what's going on, but either way, there was no fish when, we, when the rod was lifted into, so we just have to have to deal with it. I'm going to do an overnight here sometime this month as well. So, keep an eye out for that. Anyway, I'm going to go back and sit down for a little bit. Let's hope that something happens in this last hour. Let's hope I can show you another fish. Well, I'm sure you can guess that there was uh, no more fish came that day. So now I'm leaving you with a collage of photos that we took throughout the day. <laughs> All in all, brilliant day, I had a great time, as always, good food, good company, loads of nonsense talked. But I want to say thanks to everyone who's watching and the uh, the channel and sharing it, subscribing to it and all that sort of stuff. You guys definitely rock. If you've got uh, five minutes and you aren't already subscribed, well then, don't be shy. Subscribe to the channel. It can't hurt. Until next time guys, tight lines.